Hello students, in today's video we will see the hybridization on sulfur in SO3 molecule. Before going for hybridization, let us draw the rough structure of SO3 molecule. So the rough structure will be like this, where sulfur is the central atom attached to three oxygen atoms. Students, if you see the total number of bonds formed here, they are 6 and therefore one must create 6 unpaired electrons on sulphur. Second important thing what you must know is the first covalent bond formed between two atoms is always a sigma bond and then the other bonds are formed. Here there are 6 bonds in all. So out of these 6, 3 are sigma and 3 will be pi. Very important third thing what you must know is sigma bonds they are formed from hybrid orbitals whereas pi bonds they are formed from unhybridized orbitals. So keeping all the points in mind let us start for the hybridization on sulfur. So first, let us write the ground state electronic configuration of sulfur. Atomic number of sulfur is 16. So valence electrons will be 2, 8 and 6. So let us draw the 6 electrons in the valence shell. Students here, I will be keeping the d orbital vacant so that if required, I can carry out the excitation. So the electronic configuration will be 3s2. Three P four and I will keep this d orbital vacant. If I see the ground state, there are only two unpaired electrons, and therefore I need to carry out the excited state. In the excited state, this electron will get excited to this vacant orbital. So sulfur in the excited state will be. One, two, three, four, five. Now this electron will come to this orbit. So it will be 3s2, 3p3 and 3d1. But if you see the number of unpaired electrons, they are four. And how many unpaired electrons we need are six. And therefore, sulfur will go for second excitation. So sulfur in the second excited state. Now students, which electron will get excited? The 3s electron will get excited to 3d orbital. So this will get excited to this 3d orbital. So let us see what will be the electronic configuration. So it will be 1, 1, 1, 1 and 1 and 1 electrons here. So this will be 3s1, 3p3 and 3d2. Now we have created 6 unpaired electrons. Now out of this, 3 will form the sigma bonds and 3 will form the pi bonds. So the hybridization that sulfur will undergo will be, this is the first one, second and third. So those three orbitals they will get involved in the hybridization so let us write sulfur in the hybridized state and you know students hybrid orbitals will have same energy that is they will be degenerate now this 3p orbital will remain as it is this is your 3p orbital and those 2d orbitals will be like this with one electron each so those are the three sp2 hybrid orbitals they will be involved in the sigma bond formation when they will overlap with the unpaired electrons of oxygen and they will be involved in the pi bond formation with oxygen so let us see how the overlap will take place if you see the electronic configuration it will be something like this sulfur is in the hybridized state these those are the three sp2 hybrid orbitals and those are the unhybridized orbitals 
Now, just to make you understand, we have written the three oxygen atoms in this way. This is your first oxygen, second oxygen and third oxygen. So, students, the first overlap will be between this electron and this electron. So, let us see how it will overlap. So, the overlap will be like this. Now, which is this bond, student? This is the sp2 hybrid orbit. So, this is sp2 and p of oxygen. So, this is sp2. P sigma bond. The second overlap will be between this and this oxygen atom. This is also sp2 p sigma bond between sulfur and oxygen. Now how will be the third overlap student? It will be between this and this oxygen atom. So this will be your sp2 p sigma bond. Now we have finished up with the sigma bonds. Now let us see the pi bonds. Now the pi bond will be, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any hybridized orbitals left. Therefore, all three sigma bonds are formed. Now let us see the formation of the pi bonds. For pi bonds, now this p orbital which is unhybridized will overlap here in this way. Which is this orbital student? P. And this is also P. So this is P pi, P pi bond. Let's see the second one. Now this will overlap with this. So it will be like this. This is your, this is P, but this is D. So this will be P pi, D pi bond. Let us see the last one. That is this will overlap with this particular unpaired electron. So let us see the bond, which will be this bond student. This is P and this is D. So this will be P pi, D pi bond. So let us see the rough skeleton of SO3 molecule. So, sulfur is at the center. The first bond which is formed between oxygen, this is your sp2p sigma bond. The second bond is also sp2p sigma bond. And this third bond is sp2p sigma bond. Now, let us see the pi bonds. So, one bond is p pi p pi. The other bond is p pi d pi and the third bond is again p pi d pi so this is the structure if you see this if i connect this to this and this to this in this way you get the geometry that is trigonal planar that is it will be like this sulfur and the three oxygen at the three corners of the triangle so the geometry will be something like this now here they are the pi bonds and there is no lone pair on sulfur so it will have a regular geometry of trigonal planar and the bond angle here will be 120 which is the regular bond angle. So this is about the hybridization and the types of bonds. So let us just revise what is the type of hybridization student what you see here hybridization is sp2 hybridization geometry is trigonal planar shape is trigonal planar because there is no lone pair on sulfur bond angle is 120 degree which is the regular bond angle of sp2 hybridization now what are the types of bonds there are three sp2 p sulfur to oxygen sigma bonds there is one p pi p pi bond between sulfur and oxygen and there are two p pi d pi sulfur to oxygen pi bonds so this is all about so3 molecule i hope you have understood the concept so please do like this video and share it with your friends thank you students